So, question 74. A two-month-old healthy infant with good appetite is given artificial feeding since it turned one month old. When is it recommended to start the corrective feeding, like the, the fruit juice? So, for corrective feeding, is at four months. Four months. All right. An infant was born with mass of three kg. Is seven years. His brother is seven years old. Suffers from rheumatic fever. Mother asked the doctor for. They are just asking us that. Where is where where is the left relative at border in a patient that is three years old? Whether it's three years old or seven, is almost around the same area for left relative at border. First of all, just know first of all that it is the left medial clavicular line, mid clavicular line, and it's also one centimeter from that left. So first left mid clavicular line and one centimeter. So they are always most of the time they only ask about the relative at border on the left they don't ask for other parts, right and upper parts. So. Okay, this is a seven year old boy with attack of asthma and distance whistling race after playing with a dog with a dog. In the medical history atopic dermatitis caused by eating eggs, chicken beef. What group of allergens is the reason of the development of bronchial asthmatic attack? So when they are telling you about uh, the allergy arising from other maybe oxygen or something that is biological or so. So I, I feel that that is why the answer is uh, epidermal, epidermal. If it is chemical, we talk about different agents and different in dust, it's the household allergens from healing dust, pollen, directly from pollen. So I think when they tell us about food substances or animals, contact animal that is, uh, cause the trigger for the development of asthmatic attack, we should go for this word, epidermal. Uh, a 14 year old boy, as rheumatism over the last two years he has had three rheumatic attacks what cause of rheumatism does this patient have within the period of two years he has had three attacks so this is a prolonged is a prolonged cause of rheumatic attack patient with acquired heart failure has diastolic pressure of zero uh, normally we, the blood pressure is 120 80 and the diastolic pressure is supposed to be 80 why because we still have some uh, blood in the systemic circulation but if a patient is having aortic insufficiency or aortic regurgitation during the period of dance so the, the valve will be incompetent so blood will flow back almost completely into the left ventricle as a result of that there is no nothing generating pressure inside the uh, arteries during period of dance so the condition that can cause such marked Reduce diastolic pressure is aortic insufficiency. Is aortic insufficiency? Please let's take note. Let's take note of. Let's take note of that. We see other similar questions relating to all this. So we're spending them. Twelve year old child has the ulcer disease of stomach. What is the etiology of this disease? Um, I feel for me in the exam, I will still go ahead and choose Helicobacter pylori, but. Uh, as far as this is concerned, it's intestinal bacillus. Yes, it can cause ulcer, but most commonly is helicobacter pylori. A nine year old child is at hospital with acute glomerulonephritis. They are asking us what nutrients must not be limited during the acute period of glomerulonephritis. They said it's carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, so. Alright. A two month old child was taken to a hospital on fourth day of disease and you can see temperature, weakness, cough, and so on. They are crepitating fine bubbles on auscultation. You, know? you can hear crepitation or if a patient is having pneumonia. Percussion sound is shortened in the right infrascapular region. This picture shows non homogeneous segment infiltration. You see, they told us already that this is a particular segment. So they're asking us your diagnosis. We know it's pneumonia, and the segmentary pneumonia makes it very easy. Makes it very easy. So segmentary pneumonia or segmental pneumonia. Now your girl has attack of abdominal pain after fried food. So you are thinking of uh, you are thinking of gallbladder, you are thinking of uh, pancreas. They said no fever, she has pain in Kera points. So they are telling us already about Kera points. So already you now it down finally to the gallbladder. Device not a large portion B 
of duodenal probe is uh, 50 May. What is your diagnosis? So, this patient is the reason why there's a uh, problem of indigestion of fried fat means that there is no release of this uh, biological for the emulsification of fat in the patient, and that can only that usually happen in hypotonic form of biliary dyskinesia, hypotonic form of biliary uh, dyskinesia. None of these other options will lead to the uh, A baby was born at a series of gestation, delivery was normal by natural way. The baby has large cephalohematoma. The results of blood count are, you see, this, this, this. What causes, what are the causes of hyperbilibinemia in this uh, case? In this case, the answer, the correct answer is erythrocyte hemolysis. Erythrocyte hemolysis. Now, it's a uh, hemolysis that is going to cause such elevated level of bilirubin. But also we have here intravascular hemolysis. So we can have intravascular and extravascular hemolysis. But as far as Cork is concerned, I believe that they are not putting attention to be discussing that right now. This indirect, uh, indirect blue being, being so elevated and conjugated. So let's make the answer as simple as possible by just taking electrocyte uh, hemolysis because it's still within the case actually. All right. Four month old girl with blonde hair and blue eyes has mildly odor of sweat and urine. There is delayed psychomotor development. The most typical laboratory data for this disorder is so, like mass odor of sweat and urea. We are thinking towards like phenylketonuria. We are thinking towards phenylketonuria. What's the most typical lab data to obtain? And for to there's one test for for detecting the phenols in substances, and that's a uric uh, that's a ferric chloride test. Ferric chloride. So this patient collect urine and check for the uh, ferric. Uh, chloride in the patient. That's how you can detect the level of phenol. So, patient is having phenylketonuria. urine. A neonate is five days old. But there's need for vaccination with BCG. So, what's the necessary uh, dose of vaccination? Is 0.05. Just take note of that. 0.05 milligram. Seven-year-old boy with chronic sinusitis and recurrent pulmonary infections. As just as we demonstrating right-sided cardiac silhouette. What is the most likely uh, diagnosis? You see, this when they are telling you about destrocardia, this destrocardia, you have the heart on the right hand side together with sinusitis, it's like a triad. When but when they tell you about organ uh, sinus inversus, like rotation of organ to the opposite side, that is typical for Katagana syndrome. Katagana syndrome. So let's take note of that. Katagana syndrome. A two point nine kg male infant is born to a mother who developed polyhydramnios at 34 weeks of gestation. Abgar scored 9 and 9. Infant developed shocking and cyanosis with forced feed. Notice the word with forced feed. In addition, is unable to place a nasogastric chew. Uh, what is the most likely diagnosis? You know, when they are giving us this kind of condition, we, we basically we narrow our answer down to two options. This is uh, a child with either Kohani atresia or Sifagia atresia. In, in Kohani atresia, usually after the feeding, they will be feeding, like patient will be crying and there will be cyanosis on feeding and when you stop that, it should be reversed in Kohani atresia. But in Sifagia atresia, usually the, the, the ending of the Sifagia is even blocked and that is the reason why the nasogastric tube could not pass. So. So such infants that is developing cyanosis on the first feed and you cannot place nasogastric tube, it cannot pass. That is esophageal atresia. Cranial atresia is at the posterior aspect of the nasal cavity. Here is directly at the sphagus. It cannot pass through into the stomach. That's esophageal atresia. Food time newborn has developed jaundice at 10 hours of age. The hemolytic disease of newborn due to esophageal gravity was diagnosed two hours later the infant has indirect serum bilirubin level increasing up to 40 millimole per liter. What is the most appropriate for treatment of hyperbilirubinemia in this uh, uh, patient? Again, is exchange blood transfusion. Right, reading through this uh, particular condition, we have a four-year-old girl who was playing with her toys. And so this is, if you read through, this is a case of a foreign body aspiration foreign body 
and SAP also shadowing of the lower part of lungs on the right, auscultation revealed diminished breath sounds with bronchial resonance on the right. The side was done referring body. What complications are so when there is um, obstruction as that of foreign body or a cancerous process, one of the things that can develop there is uh, post obstructive arterial ectasis. That is, after that point of obstruction, you have the uh, like arterial uh, side collapse of the lungs there. So there's a little bit different between arterial side and collapse of the lung, by the way. But here we have uh, arterial ectasis, post obstructive arterial ectasis, as sort of a uh, foreign body. A man 42 years old. So they are asking us what is the minimum percent of all blood volume that could result in death by acute hemorrhage and that is 25 to 30 percent 25 to 30 percent all right this is a, a six week old child um birth had been uneventful although conductivitis developed on the third day of life conductivitis are begin we are beginning to think towards something like that children that are born with that have uh that congenital like uh chlamydia they can have Conscious of conductivitis and lasted for about two weeks. So now this child has developed bilateral pneumonia on x ray. See, this child is a febrile and has no history of fever. So this is atypical pneumonia. Why blood cell is 15 and 20 percent of it? Now, what is the most likely cause of the child's symptoms? So if you link it together with conductivitis, which could be caused by uh, an atypical organism such as uh, chlamydia trachomatis in the newborn. And yet, patients are having pneumonia. So, this is a chlamydia pneumonia. So, the cause of this pneumonia is um, chlamydia. Chlamydia. All right. Six year old asthmatic child was taken to emergency hospital because of severe coughing and wheezing for the last 24 hours. This guy's dimension is that the child is excitable as intercostal suprasternal obstructions, respiratory wheezing throughout all lung fields. The respiratory rate is 16 per minute. Initial treatment may include the prescription of. Uh, of what now this is a condition of status asthmaticus or very severe asthmatic attack status asthmaticus and there are protocols of treatment but one of the very first line among the protocol of treatment is the administration of a beta 2 agonist of a beta 2 agonist and that is in this particular option is subcutaneous epinephrine subcutaneous epinephrine a full time infant was born at a normal pregnancy and after sometimes we have you see, 12 hours of age so they are preparing to be in good passes bloody meconium stool for determining the cause of bleeding in the newborn you say what should we do according to this uh, question the best that we have to uh, do is to give like a barium enema barium enema i don't really agree perfectly but barium enema in the 43rd week of gestation, a long thin infant was delivered. It's happening, lean, pain, and covered with pea soup amniotic fluid. The first step in the realization of this patient at delivery should be what? So, when the child is having pea soup already, they are taking up there is contamination of this amniotic fluid. As such, a child also might have aspirated. See, the child is apneic, this amniotic content. So what do you do? You have to prepare for suction. You have to do suction of the tracker under direct vision. You need to get this fluid back from the respiratory tract of the child. All right, we have a newborn infant. There's mind, cyanosis, diaphoresis, poor peripheral pulse, hepatomegaly and cardiomegaly. Respiratory rate is 60 per minute and heart rate is 230 beats per minute. The child uh, most likely as congestive heart failure that is caused as a result of if it is any of these uh, congenital heart defect as your gaze vessels and all these ones are plastic heart, they will give us history that will point us towards that uh, direction but yet the, the answer is is pretty straightforward this part this man atrial cardia you can have the heart rate reaching 200 or even more as in this uh, Case. So yeah, they, they didn't tell us anything that could be pointing us towards partial to ventricular uh, block, even though we can rule out atrial flutter. 
a six-year-old boy was brought to the emergency room with a three-hour history of fever up to 39.5 and sore throat. The child looks alert, anxious, and has a mind in spiratory uh, trade-up. You should immediately uh, do what? When the child is having mind in spiritual trade usually something is beginning to cause obstruction. Something is beginning to cause obstruction. And you should prepare in this kind of patient to establish an airway. You prepare to establish an airway. Prepare to establish an airway. Seven year old boy is administered to the hospital for evaluating of vomiting and dehydration. Physical examination is otherwise normal except for minimal hyperpigmentation of nipple serum, sodium and potassium concentrations are 120 and 9 respectively. This is uh, low, this is a little bit everything. Most likely diagnosis in this patient. Now, they are not telling us about temperature, about weight, about anything in this seven years, so that rules out uh, hypothyroidism. This is not a condition of paleoic uh, stenosis. Yes, we have vomiting and dehydration, but we will not be having hyperpigmentation and so on. And the focus is not going to be this. That rules out this. This is not pan hypotropitism. We have more history. Hyperhydrosteronism is going to give us elevated level of sodium rather than a low level of sodium. So that leaves us with only one answer congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And in congenital uh, adrenal hyperplasia, one of the things that you could have a a salt uh, wasting condition, a salt wasting condition, which is going to result in low level of uh, sodium. That could happen in congenital adrenal hyperplasia. In congenital adrenal hyperplasia, you can have high level of the adrenal hormones, you can also have low level of the adrenal hormones. So that is a hyperplasia does not mean it's always high. So we will uh, stop here for now. A seven year old boy has crampy abdominal pain, rash. At the back of the legs and put out all the extensor service of arms. Laboratory analysis of this protein, urea, and microhematuria. Again, we have about three systems here already cutaneous, abdominal, we have uh, renal system. So, again, this is a condition of enoxulin, purpura, hemorrhagic vasculitis, and another name for it is the anaphylactoid purpura. Anaphylactoid purpura. So, we will continue from there. Repeat uh, later, heading for church.